Hello to you. Okay, let's think about uh, our aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. So what we use this model for is to kind of tell a story about what's going to happen in the economy, similarly to how you can analyze the cost change or the demand change to a specific product that you were thinking about. Uh, we would use this to uh, think about changes to the price level, which is a way of saying inflation, and to think about uh, real GDP, which is the inflation adjusted output in an economy. Okay, so um, what we do, let's change the color of that, there we go. Let's make that red. Okay, so this is a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. So this is a pretty abstract type uh, situation. Um, aggregate demand really is just real, or sorry, nominal GDP, which is mostly consumer spending, a little bit of government spending, and uh, firms expanding, and just a little teeny tiny bit of trade. Okay, so if you just think about aggregate demand in general, right, if people are spending more or less, if they're if they've decided to spend more, then this shifts aggregate demand out and to the right. And if we're in a recession, this is a decrease in aggregate demand. Okay, that's what a, a normal recession is gonna be gonna be called. Uh, okay, now we're gonna add aggregate supply. Now aggregate supply, a little harder to think about. Uh, because we have to consider like everything that's going on. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to use this tool. So, well, let's use the, let's actually use the long run tool. Um, so, long run aggregate supply. Okay, is right here, and this is let's call this L R A S. Okay, and this is the uh, economy operating at full employment. Okay, so I'll abbreviate that as. FE. Okay, so it's using all of its resources to the best of its ability. It's firing on all cylinders. So if we were at this sort of equilibrium level, we know that that price level, I'll call that PL star, this is somewhere between, in the real world, between 1 to 3%. We don't want higher than that because that's going to be a drag and it's going to decrease our nominal GDP levels to somewhere over there. Uh, and we don't want lower than that because that's going to depress wages. Okay, so we don't want zero percent, especially for those of you that work in the restaurant industry, right? You want the prices to go up a little bit because that's how your tips are going to go up. Um, okay, then uh, so then we've got this short run idea. Okay, and short run idea. Let's use. I guess let's use the dark blue. Uh, I'm going to try to use this guy here. I think. Ooh, there it'll go a little bit flatter. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I've kind of got, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat just a little bit. Here's our short run aggregate supply here. We'll send that kind of up there. Okay, so what's happening here? Short run aggregate supply. Okay, is that in the short run we can we can actually produce more than uh, than our output, right? There's more than what's possible, right? So like you could imagine that maybe the government gives a whole bunch of people a job, or there's sort of euphoria in the uh, in the in the economy right here. Um, somehow we got out past there. So if like full employment level was six percent, this would be some lower than six percent. Okay, uh, and the way to get there, of course, would be to increase aggregate demand out here to this level here. So this is sometimes known as an inflationary gap um, or an economy, basically an economy that's overheating. You've got some kind of aggregate demand over here. There's lots of countries out there that are incur uh, incurring this situation right here. Uh, higher, So the equilibrium is higher inflation and lower unemployment. Okay, that's bad. We don't want to be there. Uh, and what what's likely to happen is with those higher wages, we're going to snap back our short run aggregate supply until we're right here. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go backwards a little bit. Okay. Uh, then a normal recession occurs. Of you know, there's lots of versions of that. So some some version over there. And if if the recession is particularly bad. 
What the Keynesians think is that you can increase uh, government aggregate demand through government spending. And you can go from here to like here and not have much inflation, right? And if you're over here, this is a thing that people argue about. Okay. And then the last little bit uh, of this would be like if there's a technological increase. So if you know we get some kind of short run aggregate supply shift, and of course that's going to turn into a new long run aggregate supply shift, which of course would be over here. So some sort of a resource change or new technology, something like that. It's going to bring our new output over here and lower prices. So I'll give you an example. Uh, some of you are old enough to know this, some of you aren't. But in the 1990s, uh, there, the internet wasn't really a thing we could use for commerce, and we certainly couldn't use it to import or export products. But by the 2000s uh, and beyond, like up till now, nowadays you can use the internet to connect with firms all over the world, customers all over the world. This has this is done exactly what this graph is showing, right? So it has increased both the short run and long run capabilities. It's knocked down inflation and increased our overall uh, GDP real in real terms for all the countries out there. So this is what you do. You just sort of manipulate um, the, the model based on what's happening and then we read the model and say whether that's good or bad and what policies might, might we uh, want to enact or what investments we might need. There we go.